Hello again, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani, this time being joined by the reigning, defending UFC middleweight champion, the one and only Israel, the last style bender, Adesanya, joining us from his home in Auckland, New Zealand. And of course, uh, the first question has to be, what's going on with the hair? Where did this come from? You know, sometimes a, a snake has to shed its skin, has to shed its skin like, like, a, like a new new birth. And... Put it this way, you guys are about to see a different side of me, especially for this next fight. So I needed something new through this lockdown. I went down a rabbit hole, different rabbit holes, actually. I haven't made myself a tenfold a half. But like I went down different rabbit holes and I rediscovered some things about myself through experiences with the people around me, through therapy and through confronting some old demons that I'm like, you know what, I need a rebirth. So. It's happened before, and I look damn good when I'm blonde, super saiyan. So I feel like it has to happen again for this for this next game. I want to really bring back a different side of me that you, you guys haven't seen yet. Okay, so that that was a very deep and complex answer. You, you said a lot there. I mean, so Break you're saying, that, well, you said that there, there basically like there was some there were some wounds that needed to be attended to. There were some things that you had to to kind of figure out. Could you tell us what you're referring to? No stuff. I mean, like everyone. Everyone in this walk of life goes through things as 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 kids or young people that we never really address. So you have to be able to, like I said, through therapy or just asking yourself the right questions, dig deep and address those those issues or those. I, I've been doing that and I am doing that and I, I just wanted something new. I wanted to shed my skin like a snake, like a cobra, like a, like a black mamba almost. So I have to shed my skin and rebirth. So yeah, I'm going super saying, you know what I mean? Oh yes. I know what you mean. Now, uh, I remember you saying after a UFC debut, you actually felt down and, um, seek therapy, right. That helped you, you know, cause you were, it was just kind of a lot going on in your life. Did you stay with that since then? Or did you pick that back up recently? Uh, well, you, you don't have to always, like for me, it was the first three fights. The first three fights of my UFC career was where I'd come back home and it'd just be like, I'm like, why are you sad? What, there's nothing to be sad about. And then I never really knew why, especially the first one, but then through therapy, I understood why. And then by the Brunson fight was the one when I came home and I was able to just like uh, roll back into normal life and be just normal, be easy, be myself. So then after that, I stopped. And then before the Whitaker fight, because there was a lot of, that was the biggest like fight to date um, for myself. And there was a lot of like pressures that were just kind of like creeping in. So about five weeks before the Whitaker fight, I started seeing her again. And then I think after the Whitaker fight, we had a session that was supposed to last an hour. I finished it in 30 minutes because I already had the tools I needed. And then recently through this whole quarantine, through the way the state of the world is, I didn't understand certain things about myself and I could feel some old, like there was something deep in me that I just needed to get out. So I actually saw someone new as well who I did it like this. So, cause you know, you couldn't really say, and then it was good just to be able to be in my own bed comfortable and just talk to someone and then they help you bring out some old stuff. And like I said, everyone has trauma. Everyone has stuff we just kind of like suppress. Mm -hmm. Was it like, do you want to keep doing that? Or do you want to learn a new way to be able to express rather than suppress? So, yeah, I'm expressing. And do you feel like you, you got all the old stuff out? Do you feel like it's yeah. no longer suppressed? It's not suppressed anymore, definitely. Like I, like, I feel stronger than I ever have. You don't understand. I'm telling you, Ariel, I'm looking you in the eyes right now, but I can connect with you. I'm telling you, like, things are going to be different, especially for this next fight. I really feel I'm going to show the world something, especially now that they're doubting me. And I love it. They're doubting me again, especially because of the last fight. And... My director for my movie, Fraser, said, you know, like the Connor documentary, every, every movie you have this and then you need the valley. That last fight was my valley because of what he did. And it's better, you know, like, because Connor had it when Nate lost. That was his valley. Then he came back up, beat Nate, and then became double champ. But, like, we needed a valley. So it was like this build up, and then it was a disappointing fight because of the way he played the game. And then there's all this criticism about me and whatnot. And then it's like, we needed that. So in the story of my life, that was perfect. And then this next fight is where it just goes. And then, yeah. So I really want to show people and remind them because, you know, Roy Jones said, y'all must have forgot. And people, they have recency bias. So they forget. And I want to remind them who the 
I am. By the way, you know that's my favorite line of all time, right? Y'all must have forgot. forgot. That's my favorite line. I use that for everything in life. It's the greatest. Yes, Lachaim, my friend. Um, but from afar, is he? Most people would be like, "What would this guy be down about?" I mean, you're undefeated. You got your your whole career is booming. World is your oyster. Like even after those first three fights, even after the day, the debut was great. Why would you feel down about that? Is it because you're building up to something and then it's it's over and then there's nothing else to look forward to, or is it something else? No, no, no. like it's. I'm telling you this, Ariel. People, I realize, man. I said it before the word of I said pressure is an acquired taste. And I could see it on Whitaker. He had a good poker face. He was trying to hide it, but I saw cracks. Like, early on before the fight, he, he made this meme. And I was like, why are you making memes? It's not you. That's out of character. So that's already telling me something about you. You showed me your first hand. That was the first mistake he made. And people were like, you still offended by me? I'm like, bro, I just, I'm just calling out the obvious. And that's because he was under pressure. He was away from all this shit for so long. He didn't, he didn't know how to deal with it. And as the fight got closer, I could see him cracking, cracking, cracking. Most people... You casuals, if you were in my shoes, you'd kill yourself. You'd jump off a bridge because you couldn't handle this kind of pressure. But it's an acquired taste. It's like caviar. And I love it. And especially when it's on. And in my debut, in, in, in the post-fight interview, I said to John Attic, pressure makes diamonds. And I'm still shining. But it's like coffee, man. Like when you drink coffee, right? You go up. And then you have that crash. When you're in New York, Madison Square Garden, everyone's, bah, bah, you know, like all this stimulus, stimulus. And then you're finally in your own zone and there's none of that. It's, it's just, it's the crash and it's normal. Mm. It's not like I, I need that. I don't, I'm, I can't wait to get away from all this. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love the, the perks I get from this, but it's that crash. And then you have to understand that it's just normal. Everyone goes through this. Like everyone in my position, they go through this, whether they want to admit it or not. But I don't crave it. I understand it for what it is. So I had to, I had to learn how to use it myself. You understand? Use it to my advantage, if you will. It's interesting because uh, over the, the the past you know few years, we've seen long reigning champions almost feel relieved when they lost the belt. DJ was Robert. relieved. Anderson Robert. was relieved. Right? Mm -hmm. Robert, to a degree, was relieved, and he didn't have it for that long. Yeah. Can you sympathize with that? I mean, obviously you don't want to lose the belt right now, but that yeah. feeling of being like, man, it's nice to not have all that on me. Yeah. I've been said this, like I only just got the belt back about now a week and a half ago. I don't look at the belt. I didn't see it since I didn't see the belt since um, the last time since Vegas. That was the last time I saw the belt. I'm not one of these guys that's going to walk around with it and hold it and parade it. But I just, I, I told you, you know, I like, can't bring the belt to the gym. I just want to see it. Cause I just wanted to remind myself. But at the same time, I never want to get attached to it where I feel like this is a thing. If you, if you go back to some interviews, you hear me say, this is just a fancy tiara. I've been the champ. I've been the best fighter in the world. I've been telling you guys all this, but you guys didn't want to listen. And then eventually I said, you will catch up to my vision. But I'm not going to wait. I'm not. It's The belt's just the belt. It makes more money. It looks good. Da, 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 da. But it's about this. It's about how you see yourself. It's about how you think about yourself. That's the difference. So it doesn't it makes no difference before i had the belt and now when i have the belt i'm still the same person and i don't know i don't feel this relief i don't i get what they mean but we're not from the same cloth we're different and i'm sorry for prying but when you say that like the stuff that was suppressed came out like could you give me an example of something that was bothering you that you feel like has now been addressed mm, no it, no Nah, it's just, it's too personal. Uh, later on, maybe in my documentary or if I write a book one day, I will. But it's just, yeah, it's too it's too rich to be giving it free. Okay, I mean, but I mean, it's just friends, right? <laughs> ah, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, come on, come on, give me a little. No, I'm just saying, everyone goes through stuff. Like, yeah, let me let me think of an example for some people. Someone who was example abuses a kid, and then they just suppress that. They never really tell anyone or they never really express that and it will come out in different ways in your life it'll it, 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 it be in the, in the catastrophic way as well but yeah i just don't want to be i don't want to i don't want to end up on the news ariel i don't want to end up on the news you know for, for the wrong reasons like some people but you know i just want to be able to like I've, I've prepped for this shit man i've told you guys for the octagon and outside the octagon i've i've known what was going to happen Look at my track record. Everything I fucking said I was gonna do, I've been doing. So I knew all this was coming, and I was. And then after my UFC debut, I didn't expect the 
the change so sudden. So I was like, okay, I don't want to end up like one of these other statistics, one of these stories, you know what I mean? I want to be able to and then glide out when it's over. You won't see me for a year, two years. I want to be like Dave Chappelle when this whole thing is over. <laughs> this guy right here. No, honestly, man, this guy right here, if you look at my background, he is an OG. Wow. He is an OG. He I means a lot to you. Nah, you know, I just like the way he thinks. He's an he's a OG. Like, and seeing his story over the years and the way he handled himself, you know, being given $15 million and saying, Thank you, I want my freedom of thought. Don't put your hands in my work you know what i mean and i like the way he just glided out just disappeared and then came back and then he's the goat he came back and just stayed on top so yeah i, I i'm still enjoying this don't get me wrong i love this i love this but when it's all said and done ghost and and the last time you bleached your hair blonde when was that mm, 2016 or so and so yeah, 2016 or so the reason I asked that is, is a part of the reason why you want to do this to, to go back to when you were coming up, to remember the hunger, to remember what it was like to come up. This reminds you of those days when you weren't at the top and you had that hunger? A mm, little bit. Not really the main thing, but like I said, it's just think about it like a like a, a snake shedding its skin and black mamba shedding its skin or Goku going Super Saiyan. Like I posted that clip of Jalen um, on, my, on my Instagram uh, timeline a few weeks back. And it was this kid called Jalen, and he really went Super Saiyan. And uh, back in China, like if I like if I ever felt homesick or I ever felt like not motivated, I would watch that clip. And two minutes in, I'd be laughing, but I'd be getting chills and goosebumps from his inspiration, like his belief. And he really, he really went Super Saiyan because of the way he believed. And people don't understand the craziness, the magic of how that works. This thing, the brain is a magical tool cool so through lockdown this is easy i've been in china i was away from my comfort zone i didn't have people who could speak the same language as me i was there for months almost a year so this lockdown stuff was nothing to me isolation i've been doing for a long time self-isolation is easy to me so yeah I, I use this time wisely i use this time wisely some admin stuff the boring stuff i let you know slide a little bit but i picked that back up now but i worked on myself a lot so you guys are about to see a new side of me like you haven't seen before. And and life in New Zealand now, is it is it back to normal? I mean, uh, I've level seen... Two, level two. It's not normal, but like, example, we can... Like, we, we go out to dinner and stuff, but everyone, you have to sit down unless you're going to the bathroom. Um, they, try, they have different payment options. Uh, it's kind of back to normal a little bit, but it's just, there's still these rules just to protect ourselves from having like a, a second wave or, excuse me, something going crazy. We don't want an apocalypse, but yeah, right, we're good. We're Can better you than train? you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I know. <laughs> what was that question? Can, can you train? Is the gym open? Yes. We, yeah, it was open. I was training. I uh, see. I haven't gotten me a little boo boo yesterday. I don't oh, know if I you like can see it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on my Instagram story right now. But um, yeah, I've been working, man. I, I'm having fun. It's, it's good just to be with the crew, with the boys, like brothers in arms. But there's we have rules. We 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 have different crews. The lighter guys, the middle guys, and the heavy boys, and we have groups of ten that we train with, and we are not allowed to break that bubble right now, just because it's the, it's the law. So okay. uh, yeah, we're we're abiding by the law. We're doing the right things. It makes it a little bit difficult to to get ready for a proper camp, but we're doing our best because even Dan signed up with um, to fire old Dusty. So yeah, we're making it happen. Are you fighting on July eleventh? Are you fighting on August 1st? I don't know. Do, do, you have I don't know. Your, <laughs> do you have your next date yet? Uh, you're good, but not as good as me. Okay. Yeah. Um, will it be, whenever it comes, will it be on, quote unquote, Fight Island? Like charades or something. <laughs> Listen, this is an interrogation. Do you see my lighting here? <laughs> Tell me what I want to yeah. know. <laughs> Good cut back up. Okay, well, show me the backup. <laughs> now that's Joe Sonnen. That's just that's the bad that's guy. Right. That's right. That is the bad guy. Mm. He's sleeping right now. Wait, he but is. you didn't answer any of my questions there. You just kind of. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you're good, but not as good as me. But the fight island, I mean, that's an obvious one, right? You can't fight in the States right now, correct? Right. 
Um, and we know it's going to be Paulo Costa, there's, right? There's, there's, there's restrictions. Well, I think, I don't know. I don't know where Dan's fight's going to be, but I think the Apex might be even this weekend's at the Apex, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's at the weight Apex. So uh, but, but you're an international uh, fighter. Can you come in? Yeah, so it'll have to be the island. I think it'll have to be the island. I like the island. I want the island. I think it's like that's a movie type. I want it. No one knows where it is. My guess is it's in outside of the world. I think Fly Island would be like I'm uh, in Samoa or something. Like I feel like it'll be around this side of the world. I don't know. That's just my guess. But who what do I know? I'm not right. An expert and how confident are you that the fight is finally going to happen like you guys are turning into the middleweight version of tony and habib do you feel like no no no, no don't curse me that, okay sorry sorry get that back that's not that's not the case it's gonna happen it's gonna happen this the, the mma gods want this to happen the gods of all want this to happen this is a fight this is trust me this is this is some bruce d type how so look at him he's the perfect antagonist and look at me skinny little black boy with some kung fu skills and i'm yeah. up. and they guys be like oh my god it's so crazy big muscle man go down because skinny man do skills oh it's the, it's the casuals are gonna love this can't wait do you dislike him like do you have a, a dislike for this man paulo costa nah not really i just think he's a boy i look at him it's just this big uh, 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 I'm gonna break you. I'm gonna erase you, bro. It's higher. I don't like this guy. I'm gonna break his face. Like this, this boy. It's fun. I wish I could do this press tour with him. It's unfortunate because I was gonna embarrass him on the mic, man. Oh my god! Like he's made these memes. I've been tagged, and I'm like, this Photoshop skills. I'm like, you wait till I sign the dotted line. Woo! I wish I could do a press tour with him so I can come up on the mic and then come up on the night, but I can't. So I'm just going to do my thing. You know, me majesty. I'm just going to come up on the internet as I always do anyway. And then I'll come up in real life. And and do you feel like this comes at a perfect time for you after the Romero fight because of, you know, maybe you don't hate him or dislike him, but this is the perfect guy to get people to, you know, again, realize who you are. Exactly. You almost forgot, man. So I got to remind you who the fuck I am. And I, he's a perfect antagonist. He's this big, juiced up. Meh, 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 meh. And then here comes the skinny little black boy with some kung fu skills, some jeet kune do. And yeah, you're going to see some skills, man. He's good. I'm not saying he's not good. He's good at what he does, but I'm great. There's a difference. Big difference. Uh, do, you, do you think he will be on PDs when you fight him? Hey, man, all I know is I got my 25-time shirt from USADA. Woo! <laughs> got that in the mail the other day they're like 25 times tested never piss hot never will and all i know as well is that they haven't been testing at this moment because you know there's restrictions and whatnot but but if i was a person who juiced if i was a person who juiced this would be an opportune time to be i don't know how it works i know you cycle on and cycle off or something this would be an opportune time to cycle on and really get those gains that you're supposed to get while you juice. So I don't know. I don't care. At the end of the day, this don't have no juice. This, you touch it at the right spot, it goes down. And for me, this, you can't juice your brain. And also, why the f you wouldn't want to use steroids? That doesn't that make your brain small? I don't know. Like, because your body produces testosterone. So if you're getting it from out outward source, it's going to be like, right, we don't need this anymore. Your muscles just do that, doesn't it? I don't know. That's what I've heard. All I know is my hang low. All right. Fair enough. Um, but you can say we will see you by the end of the American summer. I know you guys are just completing summer over there in uh, in New Zealand. Do you think we'll see you by the end of August or so? Is that Ariel fair? Really like that tea. Ariel want that tea. <laughs> Ariel want that tea. My man, man what, what is up with you, man? Okay. What about that life? <laughs> well, I just, you know, people miss you and there's a lot of big fights to come. And so we're trying to, you know, right. we're trying to I'll just, I'll just say, yeah, it'll happen. Uh, I'm working, put it this way. I'm working. And eventually when, um, when it's all said and done, when, when we sign on the dotted line, yeah, then I'll tell you what's happening. But right now we're working, we're working hard behind the scenes. Well, and I hope, uh, and I know you have a good team behind you over there at Par Paradigma. Uh, I hope you're getting paid, my man. Don't worry. We're working. Like I said, we're still working. All right. Um, 
Now, let me ask you before before we let you go. Uh, you alluded to John Jones earlier. What do you make yeah. of all this John Jones, Francis Ngannou, him moving up the heavyweight? According to Dana White, asking for Ariel. Yes, the guy is asking me to jump up and wait, and I'm only just over two years in the company. And I said I'll do it next year because I want to defend my belt a few more times and clean out the division. And I'm gonna do it because I've done it in kickboxing and I've done it in boxing. I've been here over ten years. Why hasn't he jumped up in weight? No one wants to smoke with Francis. Trust me, that's a really bad fight for him. To go for your first fight at heavyweight, it's, it's a gangster move, like Chell said. But nah, too he won't do it. You don't think he does it? No. If he'll do it, he'll do it against someone else. He'll definitely do it against someone. Francis is not the. Francis learned from that Stipe fight. I can see. I talked to him. He learned from that Stipe fight. But trust me, nah, he won't do it. He's a. 10 years in a company plus, and he ain't done shit when it comes to moving up weight. So why would he do it now? He's not going to do it, especially against Francis. He doesn't know. No, no. Francis is just no. You don't want that. So do you think that he's doing all the tweets and then he asks for the money because they're like, hey, I wanted the fight, but then he asks for money. You, that... out you, out you, you all price yourself out of the situation. And I think you said it as well. Yeah, are you honey dicking us, Jones? And I, I left a comment under that and I was like, see, I can't even leave a comment without being a headline i leave a comment on one of your posts and then the next day i wake up it was on espn mma and all i'm like i just left a comment sometimes i forget there's millions watching me but i'm like i'm just a regular dude man i'm tweeting this twitter fingers man but i got the trigger finger though don't worry about it so you don't feel like this is sincere at all yeah not with francis not with francis no <laughs> no you won't if they did fight you pick francis to win Mm, we'll get to that. I'll answer that question when we get to it. Okay. Is there a part of you that doesn't want him to move up so that you get to him first? I don't care if he has the belt or not. I'm fighting him in 2021. Vegas, Raider Stadium. That's the fight. Okay. And last mm -hmm. one for you. Darren Till, Robert Whitaker. Just because you know both men, you know Whitaker. Mm -hmm. you're, you're sort of frenemies with Darren Till, to put it yeah. in that way. Who do you like in that one? I'll say Darren. Why? Mm. Mm. styles the style um Whitaker can beat him because Whitaker can close the gap really fast even in my fight if, if you rewatch the fight he closed the gap really fast a couple of times and I was like ooh that was close but no cigar but um Darren because his range control that's what I use against Robert when I when I when I when he, whenever he closed closed the gap really fast and there was some trickery I use as well watch the tape Darren you might learn something but yeah I'll go Darren. All right. Well, uh, great to talk to you as always, Izzy. And, uh, you know, it's fitting. I know you didn't do it for this reason, but you're reminding me a lot just talking to you of a young Kevin Randleman who we just found out is going into the UFC Hall of Fame, you yep, know, with yep, the, the blonde yep. hair. I mean, one of the all-time greats. And all I don't these know, guns, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, your physique, not quite like the monster, but, you know, with the grainy video here on my Zoom. Monster. It's uh, it's reminiscent of him, and that's a great compliment. So thank you so much. Enjoy that water, my man. Enjoy the tea as well. Thanks mm -hmm. for catching up. I appreciate it, and, and good luck, and I hope that we get to see you sooner rather than later. Likewise. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.